Hello and welcome to the 2012 football season, another year, third year for Coach Jimbo Fisher. Welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T, Tom Block along with Coach Fisher and Coach uh, Football is back certainly and uh, we'll talk about week one but congratulations on, on getting W number one here in 2012. Thank you very much. It was good to at least get out there and get the lights turned on and make sure everything, you know, we got to go through a game and get the kinks out hopefully and a lot of little things we got to correct but very pleased with their effort as far as the guys were concerned and thought they played hard the whole game. Obviously a uh, convincing win for Florida State over Murray State and we'll look at the highlights here shortly but uh, before we break down the highlights coach just from your standpoint how important was it to actually suit up and play somebody else and figure out what you've got? It does it, it makes a difference and I don't care how how experienced you are if you're a senior or junior that first game those, those butterflies those jitters to you got that season rolling as a coach how many times you've been through it because there's so many substitution issues, penalty issues, uh, communication issues, you know, just, just the whole thing. To it actually counts, you know, it, it's different. Practice, you can only simulate so much. And uh, just to get that, as I say, that taste out of your mouth, some of the, the little things you got to get ironed out, and, but it was good to get going. Talk about Murray State a little bit in terms mm -hmm. of the opposing coach, Chris Hatcher, had been at Valdosta State, yes. much like yourself, was a quarterback in his playing days, yes. but uh, really likes to chuck the ball around and has had some prolific offenses. A great coach, great coach. Won a national championship at Division II Valdosta mm -hmm. when he was there. Was a great player himself there. Was national player of the year. Uh, has turned Murray State into a great program. They're seven and four, have a chance to be uh, win their conference, probably be a national playoff team this year. Mm -hmm. uh, he's done a great job there, and they're, they're a very well-coached football team, played very hard. Uh, and, and I think they'll have a great year. Is the first game, uh, you know, is there trepidation when you're facing a team that you worry that maybe they've, you know, they've put a few tricks in there as exactly. they come out, that sort of thing? Well, and, and because they're so razzle-dazzle, they throw it around, spread it out, and they've known for that and putting points on the board. So any of those times those things happen, you know, you're worried that, you know, what they got in store for you. you got a whole year to prepare. That's right. All right. Well, we will uh, get to the highlights right after this. Florida State with a convincing opening week win over Murray State. The highlights are coming up. Stay with us on the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T. The Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. By the Florida Lottery, proud sponsor of FSU Athletics. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show, presented by AT&T. Opening week at Doe Campbell Stadium. Busy month with four straight home games, but Coach, you get the first one uh, underway. Murray State comes to town, and what's your message to the team as you get set to kick off the season? What do you, how, what do you want to be this year? You know, we've talked about expectations. We've talked about everything about our program. Well, if you want to reach your expectations, it doesn't matter who you play. It matters how you play. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where you play. It just matters when you play. What time do I have to be there to show up? And, you know, and it's just a matter of us working on us and controlling what happens to us and setting a tempo and a standard in which we want to do things and the excellence in which we want to play with. Well, in terms of when you play, when you practice was a moving target throughout <laughs> August, but uh, you knew yeah, you were like going to kick off 6 o'clock Saturday. The weather turned out to be good. You've played in a lot of uh, inclement weather in, in practice, which isn't bad, but uh, it turned out it was a gorgeous day, a gorgeous afternoon to come out and, uh, and show Florida State fans what they've been looking forward to it seeing. It really was. You had, you had the sun early and it was very humid, very hot, and then uh, as, as the sun went down, it cooled off and was a perfect night for football, that's for sure. Won the toss and uh, deferred, and obviously Murray State takes the yes. ball first. You know, this is a great advantage, I think. Great kickoff, like a 4-2 hang right here. And see, we're able to get with our speed. We, we start now on the nine-yard line. Because you kick that thing out, now it goes on to 25. And here's a great Bjorn Warner getting the first sack uh, on the third down play for them. They punt. And then hit, look at this punt. We get the – you want to talk about set this? I've never started a season off like this. Three and out. Opening punt, terrific blocking right there by all the guys. Right there is, uh, you see Christo uh, doing a great job as a freshman. James Wild on the return team. I mean, everybody set that punt up. Rashad Green takes it. There's Christian Green. There's Chad Abrams uh, running through right there. Just a great wall they set up. He hit the seam inside and took it to the house. And Rashad's a very explosive player. And they run a nice quarterback draw here. Made a nice play on the plate. Nice tackle by Terrence Brooks. Come up made a good play. And there's that rule. Now you got to go out of the game on a legal hit. I mean, for the other guys, bad. Uh, 
made a play on the backside of his own play. Great interception here by Xavier Rhodes. Next series, we get a great uh, offensive position right here on offense. And uh, run a little pass, first play. EJ rolls out, makes a nice throw right here to uh, Jared Hagans. Get about 17 yards on the first play. And uh, we end up having to punt that ball. We uh, missed a third down throw. They, they uh, uh, broke a pass up on third down, covered it. Almost fumbled it. Good punt right here. Another, I thought Casey Beatty did a great job. But he had two punts inside the 20-yard line out of three punts in the ball game. Did a great job there. Our defense, Telvin Smith and those guys flying around. Here's Scooter again making a nice uh, bubble catch out there and making some yardage. EJ on a, on a uh, scramble. They covered a the guy down. Maybe had a guy in a flat right there if he wanted to pop it, but he wanted to make sure he got it. Saw a big hole and doing a real nice job of getting down. Getting the first down and getting down. Great run. I thought Chris Thompson, boy, it was good to see him back on the field and how hard he ran. I mean, he broke tackles. He, he laid it up. And watch this run right here. Sticks it north-south, vertical. I mean, there's a lot of yak yards afterwards now. Lonnie Pryor, I thought, had an excellent ball game, too. Lonnie leading him through right here, reading the Devontae through, who actually played well. That offensive line, I thought, established a line of scrimmage, and we're improving there every week. Improving there. You know, practice got better. Now, hopefully, we'll just keep getting better. Lonnie Pryor, won't be denied, stuck the ball in the end zone, had three touchdowns on the day. It's hard to score three touchdowns in a ball game now. Here they are. They make a little play. They, they get uh, Nick to bite in on a little naked play, and they get outside, and Joyner and them guys rally to the ball. But our defense front did a tremendous job. Here they pop one out and they bounce it. But here, as you keep going lateral on us now, we're going to run you down. Nick Waysom getting his first start, who I thought had an outstanding ball game along with Joyner. Getting a sprint out there is 95, pulling him up. Christian Jones closing the gap on scrape contain, and we made the, the play out there in the flat. EJ here on a nice corner route oh, to Kenny Shaw and throws it. And Kenny takes his eyes off the ball, and we get a crucial turn. I, I was going to see if he could catch it, make a guy miss and go, and then all of a sudden we end up with a turnover. Just took our eyes off the football, but Kenny played a nice ball game. Great play here by Nick Moody out in space. Christian Jones, Vince Williams, who uh, had, an, had seven tackles from the linebacker position. And they tried that screen again, and, and I'll tell you what, 95. Five tackles, four of them are sacks, and one's a tackle for loss. That's a pretty efficient day right there. Great job by EJ Hound to snap. We get a nice run right here, get it up inside. Uh, we actually down. We got to make sure we hold on that football. We were down, and they they said it was not a fumble, but we got to make sure we don't give them that chance. And uh, missed the third down, and, and you know, an offense started a little, had a couple drops early, and uh, just didn't start the way we wanted to. But I'm gonna tell you what, you talk about a guy who plays special teams, Tajman Stevens. You mm -hmm. watch on every fans watch that guy every time he walks on the field on special teams. What a tremendous player, Timmy Jernigan. Great job of controlling the line of scrimmage right there, and uh, making a play. Yeah, our defense did a great. They're trying a little pump and go right here, the pressure. Gets them back inside, and we rally back to it. Stopped the two deep guys and walked off. We need to leave one of those corners right there to play the short guy, but they made a nice play. They got a lot of things in their offense. Run a little sprint out here, and LaMarcus Joyner closes the gap really close, uh, quick and makes a nice play. I thought we tackled well in space. You always worry about that in the opening game, and I thought we did a great job of tackling. Here we lost contain one time. Inside rusher got pushed in, then we lost contain. They're making a drive down here, getting in the, in the red zone, the tight zone. Great uh, player here by Terrence Brooks on, on a zone draw play up inside that uh, come up and made a nice tackle. Uh, Xavier Rhodes on a corner blitz, stopping, realized he couldn't get there, got his hands up, knocked it down. It's good to see Xavier back out. I thought he played well coming off that injury from the bowl game. Here they try us in the corner of the end zone. LaMarcus Joyner playing man coverage, goes up, competes for the ball, did a great job. And luckily we made him miss the field goal, I believe, here. And uh, they, then we held him scoreless there, and the defense did a great job in the, in the tight zone there. We run a little counter play. Great run by Fred. Makes the end miss, gets up eight yards right there. EJ could have pulled that ball maybe on the zone read. But I thought Devontae did a nice job here. We get a nice cut. We missed a block on the backside. I missed assignment. But, you know, Devontae Freeman making that first. That's what great backs do. They mm -hmm. make that first guy miss and then pick up extra yards and got north-south. Get a little play action here. Found a one-on-one -on -one out in the corner route again by uh, Greg Dent, who, again, I've been bragging about the whole fall camp, and, I, and he pleased me a lot in this ball game. He, his, his good play carried right on over. Here we get a play action. EJ's going actually back to his fourth receiver. We had a post route and a corner route to the other side. They doubled it and rolled coverage. And EJ read all the way on the back side. Here we had a running play the other way. EJ checks it, gets the ball back to Lonnie Pryor, and there's that guy again scoring a touchdown. It's good to see Lonnie. Ron, Lonnie looks like the old Lonnie. Quick, agile, making plays, blocking. It's great to have him back in the backfield and getting that ball under his arm. Really a good senior leader for him. Oh, tremendous football player. Now here we lost contain here. We had a bit. Dustin, one of Dustin's uh, little mess-ups here, he kicked the ball in the wrong part of the field, and we didn't squeeze the contain, and they hit a little seam right there, and we got to get that fixed on kickoff coverage because usually that's one of our strong points. Here again, a late hit by Carlos. we got to be smart there. We can't get those foolish penalties on the edge right there. Again, here they pick up a third down, and uh, good play. You beat Xavier Rhodes any time, it's a good play because he's a, he's a heck of a football player. Here they tried to double move. Now, Carlos going over the top. I thought he was going to get his first pick right there. That would have been really nice. I wish he could have held on to that, but it was a great play to knock the ball down. They try a screen play. What a play by Xavier Rhodes. Xavier sniffs it out, beats the lineman back who's trying to block him, breaks it up. 
and they do get a field goal. They, they had a field goal in there and got the ball, 21-3, and then uh, we need to have a good drive right here. We needed to uh, move the football. We're inches from breaking this kickoff. One block, if, if we could get that block right back, 12 right there, could have broke back to the right and got that block. We had a chance to hit a seam right there and come out. And, but we still got nice returns out to the 35. EJ on a nice play action right here. Finds Kenny Shaw again on the sideline on a corner route. It was a good throw and catch. Nice run, right? We miss a block up inside, but Lonnie making that first guy miss. That's a big deal now. When them backs can do that. And when both backs can do it, not just your tailback. Good play action. Actually, Lonnie got tripped up here. Had a little screen to him, and he got tripped and fell, and EJ kept it and ended up scrambling for a yard. It's a lot of running for a yard. <laughs> <laughs> and we, then we end up getting stopped on that drive. But again, another nice job by Case and Beatty getting a, a punt inside the 20-yard line. This one kicks down, comes inside around, in, even inside the 10. We got three timeouts. They got about three minutes to go. And uh, our defense, they give up something. And, we, and of course, there's that guy again, Bjorn Warner, getting a great sack on the day, and uh, we use a timeout right there. Now they got to convert a third down, and uh, they don't. We uh, end up getting pressure and getting a sack. Now we use a second timeout. We got a timeout left. They got to punt it to us. We got a chance to score right before the half, and then we got the ball coming out the second half so we can get some things stretched. Great vertical uh, broken arrow throw right here to uh, Kenny Shaw. EJ anticipated very well, threw it in the hole. Made a real nice job here. Here we are. We got a little crossing series. Pick up uh, Rashad Green, who had a nice game, and getting the ball and getting north-south, picking up a lot of yards on the crossing route. we got the two-minute going right here. feel very good. They can double cover the guy and slot EJ again. They, when you spread that pocket with him now, he can tuck it up in there and run. Did a real nice job of moving it. Here they covered the backside. EJ scram. Watch EJ right here. Pushes the ball up and just flicks it and uses his hands very well. It's great touch. And we had a great scramble drill. Kenny Shaw came from the other side of the field to get over into his vision. And where he outran, contained, and relaxed, pushed that ball up above his shoulder and flicked it and made a great throw to the corner of the end zone. Kenny made a nice catch. And we got good momentum going in the half and played two minutes before the half. That's an important part of the game. We have to get better in two minutes before the half because that's where you can steal ball games, especially when you got the ball coming out the second half. Sometimes that's you know, anywhere from 6 to 14 points you can score for the other team touches the ball. You talk a lot about, uh, you know, starting the game well. You exactly. certainly did that. We'll get back to that in a second. Finishing the first half well, starting the third quarter well. Exactly. You did all those things, so I know you're pleased with that. Exactly right. You, you, you have to you set the tone. It doesn't always win games, but, boy, you can set the tone for how the game's played, and you can steal points and put people at a disadvantage and make them play catch-up sometimes. And then anytime pressure comes upon another team, you can take advantage of that. One of the uh, – Changes that you made is that uh, your quarterback's coach, Damian Craig, was down mm -hmm. on the sideline working with EJ. His first half numbers, 13 for 17, 149 yards. A couple drops in there, one of them being the interception. But talk about the rationale and, and maybe the results of what you saw with Coach Craig being on the sideline. Well, I think one thing, I, I want him to be down there and let EJ talk to him. And, and, and it also freed me up a lot because I was having to do a lot of communication with EJ on the sideline. But being the head coach, it allowed me to stay with the defense, stay on the calls that was going on, stay in special team situations a lot more, and other parts of the game. And I could manage it from the sideline, watching the game as I was doing it, communicating back to them, and letting him see Damien there with him. And they can con have the constant conversation instead of have to be on that phone all the time. And, you know, it's just easy to do and we had a good we had a good plan in the box to get the information back down to us so we thought overall offense would help us but as a team I think it would help us too because it keep me more involved in all the other aspects of the game makes sense 28 to 3 the halftime lead now we talk about starting a game well as we look at our biggest play of the first half presented by AT&T you already mentioned your coaching career you've never had one start like this in terms <laughs> of a season but uh, set up uh, you know not just this return but given that you you're breaking in a new punt returner with Greg Reed not here for Rashad Green to do that his first time up was impressive you know special teams and defense I think are the, the hallmarks and offense yeah I've never been I say this all the time we talk about defense I've never been on a great team there's not three uh parts good but you know we start off a great field position defense play well and then we punt that ball to Rashad Green the opening first kickoff he takes it I mean punt of the year excuse me and he takes it back of the house we block it well the confidence goes through the roof and establishes him as, as a definite threat it was a big time play for us certainly was got the Knowles uh, on the board early in Florida State at intermission with a comfortable lead second half highlights are still to come so we're just getting started stay with us here on the Jimbo Fisher show presented by AT&T Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Florida Department of Transportation. Drive sober or get pulled over. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. It's time for Inside the Helmet presented by Napleton Infinity of Tallahassee. My name is Austin Barron. I play center. 
I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I'm from St. Thomas Aquinas High School. I want to disappoint Coach Triggett because, you know, he looks he looks to us like we're his sons, and he works us hard. And the only thing we can do is just make him proud when we're out there on the field. He he likes to yell, but every single every offensive line coach in the nation is going to yell. And I like it because he's not afraid to tell you the truth, and he's not going to lie to your face. He's going to tell you what's wrong and how you got to fix it. I'll give it to my mom because growing up, she was always there for me. You know, she was always helping me, driving me to my practices, driving me to school in the morning. So you know, she, me, and her really connected growing up as a child. And she pretty much she worked a 10-hour day a lot. So the only time I got to see her was in the mornings and when she was picking me up from my practice at night. And that was pretty much the only time I really got to talk to her. But whenever we talked, we, she always gave me like something that really meant something to me every time. Probably getting the start for the Boston College game because I came here as a gray shirt, not expecting to even be here during the season. And after the summer, and I, I they let me uh, redshirt for camp, and then just going straight into the season, becoming a true freshman, playing in that game. You know, it was just a real morale booster, and it just felt great. My first sports growing up were actually baseball, soccer, and basketball, and I never thought I was going to play football until I got to high school, and Coach George Smith called me into his office and asked me to come out and try out for the freshman team. And after that, I just started playing football all through high school and got a scholarship to Florida State. Well, I played two sports in high school, which not really, it kind of it made it harder for me to get a scholarship because during the spring I was playing baseball. and during spring is when all the coaches come out to the practices. So while I was playing baseball, all the other coaches were looking at all the other players. I never really had any time to go to any combines or anything. And, you know, luckily one day I was walking out to baseball practice and my head coach calls me up to his office and he says, Coach Triggett's outside, he'd like to talk to you. And I walked out there and he said, he says, good to see you and we'd like you to come out to one of our camps because I can't see you in spring. And I ended up going out to one of the camps and I had to leave early because I made a prior commitment to another camp. He called me into his office and he, he pretty much told me we want to offer you a gray shirt. And I, I had a thought, I thought about it for a little bit and a month later I accepted it. You know, at first I had, I was really nervous getting into that game and uh, historically the other center you know, he, he took me under his wing the whole entire season, made sure I knew what I was doing in case anything ever happened to him. And you know, as soon as something happened to him, he came up to me and he told me, you know, you're probably gonna be getting the start. And when I heard that, I, I kind of shook a little, I shook a little bit, I was really nervous. And he's like, you're gonna be fine. Do you do this every single day in practice? You go up against the best defense in the nation every single day in practice. You know, I took that mentality into the games and I did what I could do and I, I played well. Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Florida Fan Game. Want to win a Mazda CX-5? Visit Facebook.com slash Share a Little Sunshine. Camping World of Tallahassee. Best manufacturers. Best floor plans. Best pricing. Welcome back. Tom Block and Coach Jimbo Fisher. This is the Jimbo Fisher show presented by AT&T. Opening week, game one at the half, coach, a 28-3 lead over Murray State. Yet, I, I know you weren't pleased when I talked to you on game yes. day, uh, really with all three phases of your team at that point. Well, we got in a little sloppy. And once we start off well in special teams, and we got a little sloppy in our coverage. 
and our kicks there just a little bit, missing our spots. So that, that puts the, the, the coverage teams at a disadvantage. I uh, thought defensively we could have, we had some issues. Uh, we were supposed to be in some press coverage and go a guy get a couple easy catches to get down the, in the red zone, tight zone to make a few plays. And offense, we started a little sloppy as far as, you know, dropped the ball, didn't take care of the ball here and there. And, uh, you know, could have gave up some points if we had to because of the, uh, the one big drop. And, you know, just – T typical first game jitters, I guess, as you mm -hmm. would say, but some things that really allowed us to really tighten the screws on them at halftime and stuff that we could keep on them and show them the mistakes they made and how much better we could play. Well, obviously, uh, they, they listened because uh, you ended up scoring, I think, on eight of your last nine drives, as we'll see as we get into the second half highlights here. But the, the first drive of the second half, as we already mentioned, you want to finish the first half strong, you want to start the second half strong, exactly. and you certainly did that. We did. We established, and uh, James Wilder make a, broke a big run to set it up, and then we were able to finish and put it in the end zone and uh, just reestablish the game, probably definitely take control of the game. But I think that's something you have to pride yourself on every week, and that's one of, the, that's one of our goals as far as, you know, is a not just offense, but a defense defense or with special teams that we can control the opening parts of that second half to win the field position wars and, and get our dominance back. Yeah, well, a 28-3 lead, and uh, as I mentioned, you guys would uh, just take the ball and really just seize command early here as we get to the second half highlights uh, with well, an impressive drive. This kick here, you talk about inches. We missed a block right there. That ball has a chance to hit a seam right there, and Carlos is up the gut. And uh, but They did a nice job. Hit a little naked route here. We're going to get the ball to Nick, but they played him. So, again, EJ is able to use his legs. And I'll tell you what EJ did. He ran the ball very intelligently in this ball game. This is a great run by Watts. Watch this block by Lonnie Pryor. We, the corner, Rashad Green made it good, and we overed up front by the right tackle, Manelik Watson, and uh, Trey Jackson, who I thought played outstanding in the ball game. Get a 42-yard run to get the second half going here, second play. Come back on a pass route. They double cover. Their, they start dropping and cover EJ. Now, right here, that's where Nick, Nick caught a thigh bruise right there, and the EJ got it for him. <laughs> <laughs> we ran a power play up inside. Watch the double team. We took the double team all the way across. 32 hit it up inside and was very strong, and I thought ran with a lot of reckless abandon all night. Here he is, make a nice play by Xavier Rhodes. Uh, they got the, they tried a double move right here. Look at Nick Waysom, all over the guy, all over the guy. I mean, a big time play. And I was very pleased the way Nick played. Ronald Darby, some guys, PJ uh, Williams, some guys that really stood out as those young guys. Now we got to be careful here. Rashad needs to get that ball on the first bounce, but he gets it back. We change field position, get the ball back, and get a penalty right here, and uh, we're able to move the ball down the field again right here. EJ comes out. We got a little naked bootleg right here. Get the ball, Nick O'Leary in the flat. Uh, Nick did a, I'll tell you what, Nick is doing a tremendous job blocking. He, we always knew he's a great pass receiver, but he is doing a great job blocking. Here we get a nice zone play cut back Wilder, getting it back up inside the offensive line. Menlik Watson, Trey Jackson, Stork played extremely well. Jose Matias, uh, Cam Irving, those guys did a nice job. Here we go, get, going back to Nick O'Leary, a play we had in the first half that, uh, you know, we had was one of them we, we put on the ground and we work a little ball to the flat out here to uh, O'Leary. We have a missed signal on the bound. We have a miscommunication on a route that cost us, and then we had to settle for a field goal. But Dustin came in. It was very nice. Get his first field goal of the year and uh, kick the ball through the uprights. Yeah. And again, setting the tone again on kick coverage. But you see, missing that mark, we need to be a little more to the right with our mark. But I'm gonna, look at that guy covering kicks, Calvin Benjamin. Big athletic guy, get, gotten his first taste of playing last night. Had three big plays on offense when he did get his hands on the ball and getting better and better every week. Great play. Keelan Smith, another great young Richard. He and Tyler Hunter, I thought, played outstanding ball game. Giorgio Newberry's in the game with Nile Lawrence Stampiers. P.J. Williams almost gets him a pick six in his first game ever. Well, that guy's going to be a heck of a football player, guys, I'm telling you. Got a, there we go. And there's that guy again. Bjorn comes around behind, knocks the ball loose. We get the ball in the one. I like those drives. I was mad at Bjorn. He didn't get it in the end zone. <laughs> but uh, great. Giorgio Newberry jumps down there on the ball. We run a belly play. Get it back into Lonnie. And there he goes. Gets his third touchdown of the day. And, and it was a great night for Lonnie Pryor. Not only running, but blocking, too. How much lighter is he this year than a year he's ago? He's probably about 12 pounds. He's in that 227, 228 range now and, and carries it much better. There we go. Hit that kickoff. Hits it right on the upright and <laughs> bounces through. We have to remember that. hope that stays like that if we need one of them long ones. <laughs> There's uh, Everett Dawkins did a great job. After Taj Stevens. There's Justin Bright in the ball game. Tank Caradine, who had seven or eight tackles in the ball game. Ronald Darby. Those guys did a great job. They're getting a little sprint out here. Here's Tank and uh, Tajman on. They got a nice throw right there. Telvin made a nice play to get the guy down, but... Uh, Hey, they made a nice play. A little back right here is running. Timmy Jernigan gets a hold up. I tell you, Timmy, make sure he gets him on the ground. I don't know if he hit the ground right there. Make sure, but Timmy snatched him up. They're trying to double move, but keeping constant pressure on Everett. Rolling him out of the pocket. And there's uh, Darby again making a nice play. Boy, he's such an instinctive football player. Yeah, he and Waysom have a good battle going. They really do, and it's great right. just to keep those. We're going to need all those guys. 
uh, here. Unfortunately, we took our eyes off. We was only about catching up, catching those pooch punts, and he just and Rashad went to catch it, and you watch him take his eyes. He looked, you know, looked up right there at the last second, and that's that's the one mistake he had, and we we got to correct that. And that's a big turnover; it can cost us, and we don't need to do that. Put our defense in a bad situation. There's, look at Bjorn. Bats that ball. When he knows he can't get there, he has the instincts to stop and get his hands up. Lost contained. Niles coming outside. They make a nice play. Keelan makes a uh, good play there. Uh, they're, they're continuing to move the ball down in our tight zone now. Uh, trying to run it up inside. Real nice play by Tanky. Squeezed it down. Our defensive line did a really nice job on the night. Christian Jones played well. Vince Williams played extremely well. I thought Vince played really, really well in the night. Then we get another we get a rush on a, I don't know if that was third or fourth down, but we got a big stop right there. And, Kept the pressure on DeMonte McAllister, who also had a good night. Here we come back. Now, Clint Trickett's in the game. Watch it, Lonnie, getting him another cut. Got a nice little run by Wilder and getting another little drive going here. And then we have a big – they have verticals. We had some underneath stuff, and we had the seams up the middle, and it's the first available choice we had. We hit Kenny Shaw right up the seam. Clint made a great throw. He's been throwing the ball extremely well in fall camp. I mean, playing really well. Watch this throw. Uh, this is a different play. We had double move on. Clint again tucks it, scrambles. The back had to stay in and chip and help get in. He didn't have his outlet, so he scrambled, got a first down. Get the ball back right here. Third and 15, run a double move right here to uh, Christian Green, who made a nice catch and run right here. Great throw by Clint. Picked up the blitz on the other side. Offensive line did a great job in protection. Run a power play. But you notice the thing about Wilder, every time he gets hit, if it's at three yards, we get five. If it's at four, we get six. Mm -hmm. Always going forward. I wish Clint were to wait on a little crossing route here. That was his second option. Could have waited on his third on a third down in uh, three or four, but uh, had a nice drive for his first drive, brought us down. We were backed up in our own 10, 12-yard line. Come down, got a nice field goal by Hoppy again. Dustin kicked the ball really well in the night. Our field goals and PAT protected very well, snapping very well. Great job on the return. They're, they're get, we're getting after it. There's Gerald Demps down there on the play. It's Cox, he did a nice job on the play. We're running the ball. Nice way to come up and fill in there. I look, I look like P.J. Williams, I couldn't quite tell. But uh, there's uh, Eddie Goldman in there for his first action, playing in the game. There's Vince again, playing in the game at night and on the nice tackle. Uh, Carlos Williams, again, making some plays. Here we got a punt, put Tyler Hunter back. He's our backup punt returner, wanted to get him some touches. Did a great job of catching that ball in traffic and getting north-south. Tyler Hunter, you talk about a football player? Guy can play a lot of positions now. Here's the first route we got out here to number one, and I'm going to tell you, Sucker almost broke it down the sideline. Mm -hmm. Kelvin ran a nice route and played a nice, solid game. He was excited to get out there and play. Get a little flip play out here, Devonte. Now I told Devonte, now you don't have to walk out there and slide down. Now he's not a quarterback. He's <laughs> he's allowed to run over one of them. We'll make one of them miss. We were teasing him about it. But here we go. Pick up a nice third down. Scooter Hague. Got to get north south, Scooter. We got that first down. We don't want to go backwards now, buddy. We got to get going up inside. And uh, had a nice bubble play here. Ball thrown behind and Clint bobbled the ball, but great catch by Christian. Made two yards out of nothing. Did a real nice job. Greg Dan out there making a nice block. Here we are on a third down. Clint finds his check down his third read. We had the wireless down the field. They covered him, but that's why you dump it down. You can pick up eight or nine yards, hit it right on time, and made it. Great throw. This, we had a backside route called, and Kelvin's on the seam route on the other side. Clint read the coverage, come back into Kelvin and made a nice play. Devontae Freeman, who stuck it and got down there. Boy, I thought he got in right there, but they mark it on the one-inch line, and uh, we let uh, Debrell Smiley get as his first college touchdown. Did a great job on the belly play. We get, get a little lower up there. We, get, get, we, we On the goal line runs, I think our line, we're getting a little bit high, but I thought in that job. Reggie North, the first plays ever in college, gets in there on defense, makes a tackle for loss. That guy's going to be a great player too, Reggie is. I'm telling you, Taj Stevens did a real nice job. There's Eddie Goldman again on offense. Devontae, there's Faircloth. After having both hips operate on Faircloth back out there playing. Kevin Happula, transfer from Penn State, is doing a one. I blocked really well in that game. Had a catch in the game. Did a nice job. Threw a little bubble out here to Benjamin. It's a little different getting that big guy on the ground. And, he's, <laughs> and you see how agile he is for a big guy like that. Here's uh, Debrell Smiley again sticking that ball up inside. You know, Trey Pettis got some line there. Uh, time up in there. There's Daniel Glauser. Got his first action in college at uh, Division One level. And of course, uh, there's Wilder again running the ball in. Had 100 yards on the night on 12 carries. There's a Jacob Farron crew come off an ankle injury. It's great to see him back out there. And just a good overall win for us. Uh, you know, great, uh, great job. There's Brandon Jenkins, you see, as Brandon uh, had an injured foot and uh, preliminary indications came back that everything was okay, but we'll still have to double check and we pray that that'll be all right because he, he, he was having a heck of a game too. 69-3, the final score since we saw that shot of Brandon. We'll start there. 
Uh, Tank Carradine wound up leading the team mm -hmm. in tackles. So, I mean, Brandon goes down, Bjorn Werner has four sacks, and oh, by the way, the other guy, you called him 1A, 1B, and 1C in terms yeah. of the defensive ends, leads the team in tackles. Exactly right, and, and it's good to have those guys. Hopefully we'll get Brandon back out there, I think. He, and Brandon had a sack in the game. The first two plays, he batted a ball and then had a sack right off the bat and was playing, I thought, played tremendous. Played to run, made two or three plays on the run from the backside that were really good. And, uh, you know, then we had, of course, Bjorn played his way, and Tank Carradine played a great ball game, too. Offensively, a number that jumped out to me, 285 yards rushing, zero yards lost rushing. The offensive line, which you have spoken very highly of throughout fall camp, I mean, there were no negative yardage plays in the game. Exactly. I mean, what that tells you is we're putting a hat on a hat. We know where assignments are. Now we're our technique. We got to get better. There's a lot of technical things we got to get better at, and we just got to get better overall. But we know where we're going, what we're doing, and we're athletic enough to get on the guys and, and, and start the trend to block them. And our backs run did a great job of getting north south. Let's get to our biggest play of the second half, brought to you by Xfinity. And it came on the, uh, the first drive, a guy who really had a great game for you. 12 carries, 106 yards, the total tally for James Wilder. But on that initial drive of the third quarter, a 42-yarder that he exactly. almost took to the house. He did. He hit it down the sideline, and it was good to, like I say, reestablish that first drive. But him getting into the game, getting that confidence going, and, and getting north-south, and just getting getting him flowing and playing, he's going to be a big player for us all year. And you saw a little bit what I talked about in spring ball and fall camp. I mean, when that guy gets rolling, he's hard to get on the ground. Yeah, yeah I think Murray State would attest to that after <laughs> after what happened on Saturday. Florida State gets a win. They're 1-0 on 2012 or in 2012. We've still got more to come, so stay with us here on the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T. Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero, real Coke taste and zero calories. Napleton Infinity of Tallahassee. It's time for Seminole Insider presented by Hyundai. Inside information for the loyal fan. Hey! Jack, go be! Good job, guys. Blue 18, sir! As he's driving, driving, press it. Blue 18, sir! Blue 18, sir! Hit! purpose here today is to address the issues with the health of our youngest son, Ethan. As we all know, he, he was uh, diagnosed with a very rare, very rare blood disease called Fanconi anemia. With Kids First Fund, we're hoping that we can give the money needed and bring the awareness so that we can find a cure. Our website is on a quest for a cure .com or kidsfirstfund.com. The Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by SunTrust, the official bank of the Florida State Seminoles. And by Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe. The Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible by the Florida Lottery, proud sponsor of FSU Athletics.
Welcome back everyone and joined again by Joy Simons, the head chef here at Florida State. And today we're going to be talking about some international food, international favorite Wiener Schnitzel, but you've got a different name for for one of your favorite Florida State football players. Correct. I call it the Werner Schnitzel. So Bjorn is one of our best players. He's a great guy and he's from Germany. So sometimes we like to take some of their favorite foods from overseas and incorporate them into the menu. And a way we're doing that today is to take the typical wiener schnitzel and make it a little bit healthier. So what we're gonna do is I have some pounded steak out. You can use veal, beef, or pork. And we're gonna pound it till it's really thin. And then we're going to combine it with some wheat flour. So we're just gonna go ahead and coat both sides of it with some wheat flour. And that wheat flour, you're saving a lot of calories on that one too. Yeah, and you're adding some fiber. So everybody needs more fiber. Then while that's sitting in the coat, we're gonna add butter and a little bit of oil to our pan. We're just gonna get that nice and warm. We're gonna shake off the steak and make sure that we don't have any extra flour. And then we're just gonna go ahead and lay it down in our pan and pan fry it on both sides. So it's gonna cook and it's gonna be nicely light and golden brown on each side. So once it's golden brown on both sides, you're gonna leave it for about another minute to make sure it's cooked through. Since they're such thin steaks, they cook really fast. So we're gonna just turn off the heat and let it finish cooking. And then I have a plate over here and something we like to serve it with is salad. So that it doesn't get, um, you don't have all those extra calories that you might get with adding spetzel, some potatoes or anything like that. So we have a salad and it has some fresh peaches and walnuts. Walnuts are something great that we like to have available at all times. They add, um, they help your body repair itself after you've done a long workout or maybe you've had an injury. Walnuts are something great for helping you, your body repair. So we're just going to go ahead, add our Werner schnitzel to our plate, and then we let the players enjoy this. You want to taste this? I'm not a player, but I still get to enjoy it, right? Correct. Oh, that's <laughs> obviously always a good thing. And walnuts are so good too, that texture that they yeah. add to that. Yeah, they add a great crunch. And the peaches are there for just some good flavor. Cuts so easily. This, there's no way this is going to be bad. There's no, no way this is going to taste right. That wheat flour really does add an extra layer on there too. Yeah. I would never have thought to do that. Some nice toastiness. It really is great adding that extra fiber there, and I guess you even get more nutrition on top of that. It's a lean piece of meat, great stuff there, awesome. Uh, remember, you can find all of Chef Choice's recipes by visiting Seminoles.com right now. Come back next week for another episode. The Jimbo Fisher TV Show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Florida Department of Transportation. Drive sober or get pulled over. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Florida Fan Game. Want to win a Mazda CX-5? Visit facebook.com slash share a little sunshine. Camping World of Tallahassee. Best manufacturers, best floor plans, best pricing. Florida State 1-0 and and we'll be back at home this weekend. It's time now for our look ahead presented by Camping World and Coach uh, Savannah State comes to town and obviously this is a game where Florida State is a prohibitive favorite. Uh, was supposed to be West Virginia and that game mm -hmm. uh, went away. West Virginia changing conferences and electing not to play the game. So uh, from your standpoint as you get into this game, obviously this is a team you're going to have out man, but what, are, what do you look for from your team? How will you approach this contest? How will we compete from within? How, how how much better do we want to get to go to where we want to go to? And I think that that's the challenge comes from within. No matter who we were playing this week, the challenge has got to come from within. Champions are made from within, and the ability to correct mistakes, not make the same mistakes twice, become more fundamentally sound, and increase your arsenal of the things you can do offensively, defensively, and on special teams. You talk about correcting mistakes. The, the old adage sort of goes that, you know, you, you make the most improvement between mm -hmm. game one and game two. So having looked at the tape from game one, uh, you know, I know there's a long way for you guys to go, but are there certain specific things where you feel like you've really got to get it cleaned up? Well, I think, you know, uh, some, on some of our uh, kick coverage at times, making sure we leverage the ball all the times. I think on our return game, making sure we, we don't turn guys loose and have them free running out of returner. Offensively relaxing early and taking care of the ball a little better, making the plays early in the game to establish ourselves. And on defense, just to keep 
to keep playing at the line of scrimmage like we play, and then make sure we communicate in the secondaries and our coverages and how we're going to mix things up for us as formations. All right, sounds good. Six o'clock kick again under the lights, Stoke Campbell Stadium this Saturday night. There's still more ahead. In fact, it's your turn to, uh, or your chance to ask the coach a question. We'll do that after this timeout. Stay with us here on the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T. The Jimbo Fisher TV Show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero. Real Coke taste and zero calories. Napleton Infinity of Tallahassee. Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by SunTrust, the official bank of the Florida State Seminoles. And by Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe. Welcome back to the show. Just a couple of minutes to go. Time to uh, ask Coach Fisher a question presented by Florida Farm Bureau. Our first question, Coach, from uh, Gary Foley in Lake Mary, the Central Florida area. This is a good question. Talks about the fact that there's uh, uh, multiple players on the same team wearing the same jersey uh -huh. number. So what is the rule on that and how does that happen? The key is that, first of all, you can't be on – no two players with the same number can be on the field at one time. So generally when you do have uh, dual numbers, I mean – matching numbers, it's usually an offensive guy and a defensive guy. Mm -hmm. And so where the problem becomes is special teams, if you're ever on the same special team. And last night, we had to make sure we were, that way we had a, well, one of our backup snappers was number 75 with Cam Irving. We had to make sure Cam wasn't on there. And then we had a, uh, uh, with uh, Reggie Northrup and Jared Higgins on a kickoff cover team, we had to make sure one of them came off there. But that came about mainly because of recruiting. A lot of kids want their number. Recruiting has become such a big deal. Uh, and if guys aren't on the field at the same time, they can have it. So two guys can have the same number. And that became more about in recruiting battles and circles than it did in everything else. So uh, that's where that came from. But that is a good question. You can, you just, you can have, if you have as many guys with the same number as you want, they have to, to, no two of them can be on the field at one time. All right, good question. Thanks for that. One more from uh, the Charlotte, North Carolina area, Joe Navarro. What are the advantages, disadvantages of starting the season with four straight home games? Well, I think that depends on your team. I think if you've got a young team, sometimes that can be a great thing. It gives you a lot of comfort and to stay at home. Sometimes you've got an experienced team, it may not matter as much. But I think it does give you one thing. It lets you get the season started off the right way. And it can cause problems toward the end of the year because if you've got more away games. But, you know, usually your non-conference games are at home, and then your conference is usually split anyway. So from that standpoint, it does get you a chance, to, if you play well, to get out, get out of the blocks well and start the season off well. All right, sounds good. Thanks for those questions. Coach, uh, congratulations on a victory in week one, and uh, we'll do this again next week. Best of luck this week. Thank you very much, Tom. All right, and thank you so much. We'll be back next week. Thanks for joining us on the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T.